Hey everyone, Green Cricket here and today we talk about tournament preparation, including meta and personal preference analysis, free strategies for picks and bans, and how to approach teching. Let's start. The first question we need to answer before we start playing in a tournament is, what decks are out in the meta? So we hop into rank the pro ladder and note down the decks we encounter. Let's check out QuintDB, watch some streamers to really figure out what other people are playing. Then we create a table where we list every deck we think will appear in the tournament as a column. Now we go deep within us because we need to determine which decks are we comfortable playing with because it doesn't make sense to play a deck on the tournament you're not used to or you can't pilot perfectly. Again, we write down the decks and then we put them into the table as rows. We include the leader, a name, telling us more about the deck, and I personally also include my comfortable level, which is basically a scale from 1 to 5, telling me how comfortable I am playing this deck. For the measurement, I take into consideration my ability to pilot the deck, the consistency of the deck, or how much range is required to make it happen, and my general gut feeling about it. Now comes the interesting part, even though it is a bit of work. We'll go through every row of our table, and add into it how favorable our deck is against the decks we noted down before. The numbers from 1 to 5 would translate into very unfavorable, unfavorable, kinda equal, favorable and very favorable. Think of counters like Sreers against Neckers, Removal against Engine decks and so on. And talk with friends and other Quent players to look at the table together with you. Maybe they have some valid input which you oversaw. In the end, however, it is you who decides on the number, because you need to play the matchups in the tournament. Now we have a table with good and bad matchups and some comfortable numbers. Analyze the table intensively and check if there are certain decks which are very unfavorable against decks you might want to play. Those will become potential bans. Then check your decks, keep your comfortable level with them in mind, and check if they are favorable against most of the other decks. Those will become potential picks. Depending on the format of the tournament, there are different strategies to nail down picks and bans, so for the rest of the video I'll focus on the Conquest ruleset since it's the most commonly played in Quent. So let's start with picks and ban strategies for Conquest. For those of you new to the tournament scene, Conquest means that you'll bring 4 leaders, you then ban one of your enemy and then you'll have to win with every one of your leaders. Quent Challenger did a splendid explanation of the format and I'll put a link into the description so you can check that out. There are three basic strategies to approach Conquest. Hard counter one deck, dodging a counter, or use the ban to enable certain sleeper decks. Let's start with hard countering one deck, which is what Super JJ did against Coleman in the last Quent Open. Since you need to win with every single deck in Conquest, it doesn't matter if an enemy goes 2-0 on you, because as long as he can't win with his last deck, well, then you win the tournament round. For example, if your enemy brings Consume, you can adapt your deck so all decks are very favorable against Consume, which will make it very hard for your enemy to win with that deck. This is a very strong strategy if it works out, but it can be risky if your opponent runs an unconventional lineup or he's able to sneak in a win because you have a bad hand. The second strategy is dodging a counter. It is basically the counter strategy to what we just explained. In the case above, if an enemy teches actively against Necker Consume, you could bring Swarm Consume or Archas Queen with a totally different deck behind it to make their tech choices less efficient. We'll talk more about teching in a minute though. The benefit of this strategy is that the enemy has weakened the decks by tech choices, which you don't hit too hard anymore, but the downside is that if your opponent doesn't try to counter you and just plays a very strong autonomous deck, then you may have a disadvantage. Those two strategies, in addition with no strategy at all and just bringing strong decks to the tournament, works in a rock paper scissor way. Countering beats strong decks, strong decks beats dodging and dodging beats countering. However, there's a third strategy which is using bands to enable certain sleeper decks. Let's say we believe that Greatswords is a very good deck which is not common and no one would expect it. However, we know that Greatswords has a very tough matchup against spies if the spy player knows what he is doing. So you could ban spies and then tech your whole deck against the other meta choices. This works really well if you find a deck which is really different from the rest, but it doesn't make sense to just bring a very weak deck to a tournament just because nobody is expecting it, even if you tech accordingly. I mean, feel free to try, I would be looking forward to seeing Queen's Girl in a tournament. On a basic level, teching just means switching cards in your deck so your deck becomes more favorable in the tournament because of what you think will be played there. 
Of course, most decks have some kind of card skeleton, meaning that in a spy deck you probably want to include emissaries and brigades. But except from the skeleton, you always have the ability to change out some cards because the, let's say, net decks, which are being played in a normal ladder, are tailored to counter the other decks played on the ladder. And you should do this because newer players tend to pick decks they can afford, decks that streamers recommend, which rank high on Quinty B, which have been played in recent tournaments, and so on. So depending if you use a countering, dodging or other strategy, you want to exchange your flex card slots accordingly. Typical tech cards are Artifact Compression and Muzzle. Artifact Compression is good against decks with single strong bronze unit like Brigades and Neckers, and both cards are good in situations where you want to deny an enemy strategy like denying a slice of target. Then we have Scorch, Igni and similar effects. They are good against high unit decks like Spies or Siri Nova. Madrom and Mandrake are good for denial and to destroy buffed up units like Joachim buffed Brigades, Renvarias, Neckers and so on. Lazarate and AoE in general is your choice against Swarm decks. Then we have Vikovaro Medic, Caretaker and other Graveyard Hate tools which can deny resurrection targets or steal an enemy all geared. Asaya denies resurrection targets as well or could fill the enemy deck with trash cards which hurts decks which rely on finding one special card in the deck. Last but not least we have Weather and Clear. If an enemy plays Weather, you could consider playing Weather Clear, but offensive Weather in a meta where nobody uses Clear is good as well. Oh and the special tip, bring Hazards if your enemy plays Boons, because the Hazard will override the Boon and therefore disables his whole strategy. Goodbye Moonlight. Of course there are more, but this should give you a general impression. If you Tech, then bear in mind that usually opponents end up with playing the strongest or more consistent deck as the first deck in a matchup, because they are looking for an easy win. Decks like Mill and first picking that against Dwarfs for example would ensure that the odds are ever in your favor. So let's do a quick summary. The first and most important step is always creating the matchup table which you'll need for all your decisions afterwards. Then we pick a strategy for the tournament and we tech according to the picks and bands and our strategies. Did this video help you and would you like to see more like this? Let me know down in the comments below and if this is your first time here I'd love you to subscribe and join our little cricket family. Also, special thanks to Team Aretusa and especially Henotje, Danman32 and Datra for providing their experience. Without them, this video wouldn't have been possible. See you all in game.